So hopefully I have time for a quick question here. Uh, this is one that I saw, actually my, my son saw this, on Dear Hank and John, and I don't know if it's been solved already. So if, if someone already posted a solution, that's fine. I'm still gonna post my own solution because uh, I just like that. And, and so let me describe the question and then I'll turn off this camera so that we can get to work. Uh, the question was something like this. So suppose you have a person standing on a scale, and so I drew that right here. Here's a person standing on a scale, and I'm gonna give some numbers in just a second. And then there's another scale right next to them with a bucket of water. And they stick their hand in the bucket of the water. What happens to the two scale readings? Okay, there's a couple ways we can approach this problem. So I'm just gonna start, uh, I don't really have an, a formed solution already in my head. So I'm just gonna start talking about this stuff. And I'm gonna turn off this camera because it's kind of bothering me a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so first of all, let's just go back to a person standing on a scale. No water stick figure person. Okay, so let's say uh, the person has a mass of, um, I'm going to say 10 kilograms, which is wrong, but the numbers don't really matter. Okay, so let's say the mass is 10 kilograms. And I'm also going to say the gravitational field has a magnitude of 10 newtons per kilogram just to make the numbers work a little bit easier. I don't have to use a calculator or something like that. It's really 9.8 newtons per meter, newtons per kilogram, but that's close enough. Okay, so if this person is at rest, we have uh, Newton's second law says F net, it's actually a vector, is equal to mass times acceleration. But if the acceleration is zero, then the net force has to be zero. So I can say in the y direction, let's call this x and y, F net, y equals zero. So I know the total force in this person is zero. Now, what forces are on the person? There's only one force that is not from something touching, and that's the long range gravitational force. So if I draw this as a force diagram, I can represent the person as a dot, and I have a downward gravitational force. I'm gonna draw it as a scalar value since it's in the y direction, mg down. The gravitational force on a person is the mass of that person times the gravitational field. So in this case, this would be a 100 newtons pulling down. Now, I know that the total force on this person has to be zero, so the only way that can happen is an upward pushing 100 newton force from the scale. The scale pushes up, and we actually call this a normal force because it's perpendicular to the surface, or normal to the surface. So in this case, I could write N minus mg equals zero. I know the value of mg, so n minus 100 equals zero, n equals 100 newtons. And yes, we do have the problem of units look like a variable, but that's, I'll write this out as newton. How about that? And so the scale, the way the scale works is actually uh, an old type of scale would have a spring, and the more that spring is compressed, is dial turns. And so the compression of the spring tells you the reading. But the, the point is, whatever this force, the scale pushes up, is the same that the person pushes down the scale, because the scale is also at rest. Uh, so this would read 100 newtons. And that's your basic scale. Okay, now let's go to uh, a glass of water, and then we'll put it together. So just, just the water on a scale. So here I have uh, water, it's, a, it's in a glass. And here's my scale. And then here's the floor. And there's some reading right there. So let's say the mass of all this stuff is one kilogram. I, I, I just realized I don't like that number. I'm gonna say two. Mass is two kilograms. So again, I could draw a force diagram for the water. I could say this, uh, mg in and that's for that whole glass of water that has to be equal. But here's the thing. Let's say, let's say I take a part of that water, right there, one kilogram. One kilogram of water inside the water. That water, that if this is uh, water at rest, it's not being stirred in a thing like that, then the acceleration of that water has to also be zero. So let's just draw the fourth diagram for that water. So here I have the, the piece of water in the water, that's one kilogram. Now what forces are acting on it? Well, I know there's a downward gravitational force, mg, uh, that would be equal to 10 newtons, right? Because m is one and g is 10. If it's at rest, there has to be something pushing up. 
Okay, well, the scale pushes up. It's normal force. No, there can't be. Because look, the, the water's not touching the, the scale. You can't push without touching. So, in fact, what's pushing up on it is more water. And in fact, the water pushes on the side and the water pushes on the top. But the overall effect is that this water around it is pushing up and we'll call that FB, it's a buoyancy force, and it has to be equal to 10 newtons. And it's due to interaction with the water around that little cube of, of other water. So water floats in water. I don't know if you knew that, but it does indeed float. Okay, so what if I take this one kilogram and I replace it with uh, a steel that is, has a mass of 10 kilograms, it's much heavier, but it's the exact same shape. Well, in that case, the water still interacts with it the same way. So if I put a 10 kilogram block in there, it would look like this. I have a downward gravitational force that's much larger, mg equals 100 newtons, but the buoyancy force is still gonna be the same. It's gonna be Fb equals 10 newtons because it depends on the shape of the object. And this is where you get the famous equation, the buoyancy force is equal to mg no, yeah, it's a, what's equal to the weight of this water, right? Because this water floats. So this is the weight of the water that is displaced. So the weight of the water displaced is going to be equal to uh, rho times V times G, where rho is the density of water. V is the volume of the object. And G is the gravitational field. And so again, density is mass over volume. So if I solve that for mass, I get density times volume. It's just mg, I was right. So that's how a block floats. Now in this case, this 10 kilogram block would not float. It would sink because uh, it would accelerate down and then there'd be another force, a viscous drag force because it's now moving to the water. But the important thing is it's not just gonna stay there because the, the weight is greater than the buoyancy force. Okay, what if I put my hand in a bucket of water. So let's do this. Here's my water. I'm gonna draw my hand first. It's a fist. It's not a very good fist. There's my scale. And this is two kilograms of water and the glass, uh, and then the scales on a surface. Okay, so let's say my hand displaces one kilogram of water. So if I, that means that the water has to push up on my hand with the force Fb equals 10 newtons. So, but if the water is pushing up on my hand, my hand has to push down on the water. So, uh, because forces come in pairs, Forces are always an interaction between two things. This is object A, this is B. So let's say there's a gravitational interaction between A and B. This is F B on A, it's actually a vector, and this is F uh, A on B. And the magnitude of these two vectors are the same because it's the same interaction. Uh, this is the same as saying here is, I don't even wanna draw it because I'm gonna do a bad job. Here's the United States, there's Texas, there's Florida there's Maine, and there's New York, and there's LA. The distance from New York to LA, LA, is equal to LA to New York, just in the opposite direction. The same thing. It's, it's one distance between them. There's one interaction between these. So that means that if the water pushes up on my hand with 10 Newtons, my hand pushes down with a force of 10 Newtons on the water. So now I'm gonna draw the water. Here's the water. I have, uh, my hand is not there, okay? But my hand is pushing down with 10 Newtons. And then there's a gravitational force pulling down, uh, mg, and then there's an upward pushing force of the normal force that's actually from the scale down here. So let's write this out, F net y. It's gonna be n minus 10 minus mg, which in this case was two times 10, right? Because uh, it had a mass of two kilograms, equals zero. So now I get n equals 10 plus 20 equals 30 newtons. 
So before, without the water, without the hand, uh, did I even do that? Did I? If that's uh, this whole thing is two kilograms, then this would read 20 newtons, right? Because there's a two times 20 pulling down, two, there has to be the same pushing up. So, but now once I put my hand in there, if I put my hand in the water, I'm pushing down on the water, then it's gonna read 30 newtons if there's a one of 10 newton force pushing up on my hand. So putting my, your hand in water, even if you don't touch the bottom, is gonna change that scale reading. You can try this easily. You could put uh, something on a scale, and we do this in lab, and put it down, and you can see that it changes. And in fact, there's a really fun experiment like this. this is, here's the best way to do this. So you take a glass of water, and you put it on the scale, and then you take a ball, and you support it from a spring scale, so it can read the force. And you'll see that when you put the ball in the water, the spring scale is going to decrease and this force is going to increase. But the amount this decreases is the amount this increases because the forces still have to add up to zero. Okay, okay so now let's go back to our, uh, our problem. So here is the person standing on the scale. Here is their very long arm standing in, with, in the water. And I said that uh, without that, Let's say that this displaces one kilogram of water. So that means that there is a 10 Newton upward force on that hand. Well, if you look at the whole person, then still the person's at rest. So I have the downward gravitational force, mg. I have the upward force from this scale, n1. I'll call it, this is scale one, this is scale two. And then I have the upward uh, buoyancy force, fb. I know the buoyancy force is 10, so the normal, and this is equal to 110, so this would be equal to 90. So this scale, instead of reading 100, would read 90. Now if I look at this scale, this scale, just like I said before, has this hand pushing down on it with a force of 10 newtons because the water pushes up on it with 10 newtons. So this would read 10. So the sum of these two would read 100, just like before. Okay, because this system has to be at rest. You can do this also, and in fact, uh, the, the Wii board, what was it called? The Nintendo Wii had a little board, and you would stand on it. And it had four sensors in the corners. And uh, the, the total weight of all the sensors would have to add up to your weight. But if you lean to one side, this force would increase, that force would decrease, and it can tell where, how you're standing just by how you're standing on the board. It's kind of the same idea with these two scales they have to add up to, to the total weight of you if you're at rest. Um, okay, I think that answers the question. Um, the, the question is, yes, your scale reading would decrease, that scale reading would increase. And I think that's a good enough answer. Hope that helps. And if someone else had a great answer to that too, that's cool. And, and if John and Hank, if you guys want to call me, I mean, you know who I am, just let me know. I'll be happy to have physics discussions on your podcast anytime.